Dana, the bulkheads have closed. I'm cut off. Six months of planning down the drain. What a mess. Oh, crap. Hold on. Oh, my God, they're heading this way. Run, Strauss, run! Ellie, Ellie, come in. Ellie. Dana. Okay, I'm back. Did you say six months? How long have I been here? Three years. Ever since age seven. Three years? Yes. Look, there's no time to explain. There's an ambulance bay around back. I'm uploading the route to your rig. Video games are becoming more and more about storytelling. In the early days, they were, there wasn't much story in the video games. It was more about the, the um, uh, very simple kind of gameplay with, uh, with achievements. These days, the real progressive video games have intricate plots and lead you through emotion the same way that a movie would. We didn't actually wind up creating this exact environment, but a lot of the uh, things that you see in here are actually represented in Dead Space. You know, the look and feel of the doors, stasis chambers, almost medical look to the tiling, the very strong fluorescent lighting. Only the difference in, in a video game versus a film, it's not a linear story. They create a setting in which um, you get to experience the story, and so it makes it more complex. We're not really trying to nail exactly what things look like. We want to just get a feel for what the environment should feel like. How do we establish mood? How do we establish uh, kind of like a background for what's happened here? If you do one thing, one different thing, it can actually change how the end of the story happens. And that sort of, you know, that's your, your inflection with the, the product that actually allows you to tell a different story. A big part of the games that we make here at Visceral contain uh, epic moments, times when uh, players are just really wowed with both what they're seeing and what they're doing. But you can tell it uh, so many different ways that you actually have a modicum of control over it. Traveling on a train and you're battling necromorphs and the train kind of comes off the rails, you can kind of get a feeling and see that there's flames and intense speed and you're, you're actually trapped on this train when it's kind of going haywire so this was the concept art that actually inspired the train level for a Dead Space 2. story is extremely important for Dead Space because Dead Space is very character driven. It's all about Isaac and his experiences. It's all about the setting of being in space in a very confined space. That feeling of claustrophobia, that feeling of darkness, quiet, fear. An interesting little bit about Isaac Clarke that you might not know is that his name, Isaac Clarke, comes from the name of two science fiction writers, Isaac Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke. And so that's where Isaac Clarke comes from. The point being is that playing a game that's about intellect, it's about thinking, it's thinking man shooter. In what we produce, we tend to focus more, uh, when it comes to Dead Space, on people who are into story and into character. The real key to it is that if you can identify with something in the game, you will suffer gameplay. You will go through anything because you want to find out what happens at the end. He's not, uh, he's not a space marine, he's not military, he's not police, he's not a professional, but he's a smart guy. He's able to get through a very dangerous environment all by himself by relying on his wits. The enemies that Isaac is dealing with in Dead Space are called necromorphs. It seems like a disease or some kind of you know, viral spread that infects uh, dead tissue and brings it back alive, and it changes and warps it in different ways. Visually, we wanted them to be grotesque, but we wanted it to be grotesque in a way that reminded you that it at once was human, but it's been distorted. So necromorphs look human, 
you can see human parts, but at the same time, they've been torn and twisted and parts have been ripped off. And so that was part of the horror, is like deciding how do we create a, 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 a creature that is so, so scary, so spine tingling, that just looking at it scares you. A different angle, instead of having players shoot the head and the chest, would be to have them cut off the arms and the legs. And that's where the idea of strategic dismemberment came out. And actually, it works great on a number of levels, not just in terms of the game design, the game play, but in terms it fits perfectly with the story. These things are reanimated dead tissue, so you can't just fell and pull the bullets, they're already dead. You have to actually think, all right, how can I chop off his limbs? If I cut off his legs, he'll come slower, but he'll still keep coming. Like, if I chop off his arms, he won't be able to attack me quite as much, but maybe he'll get up close and try to vomit on me. It, it feels more tense if you have to be careful with your shots and you have to be precise and if you have a limited amount of ammunition then you know if I shoot too many shots, if I'm not precise enough, then I won't be able to survive this encounter because the, the necromorph is going to come get me. You, you have all of your senses at work. You know, you've got uh, perhaps besides maybe not smell, but, uh, but you have the, your visual senses, your audio, everything is, is pulling you into the story. Even when you watch a movie, you're not interacting with the movie, you're passive. And that's one of the big differences between video games and, and any other form of, of entertainment, I think, is the active nature of it, that you're, you're, you're participating. And I think that's what draws a lot of people into it. It sort of combines that element of sport where you're participating and interacting with it, but yet you're getting the visual stimulation and the audio stimulation of a movie, and the, the combination is killer. And then you have that, uh, that little third thing that I think is really impressive is that uh, you can die, <laughs> and that will determine, you know, sort of how things go for you in a game. The thing that games have that film and television have less of is the impact of the player. The player is, I mean, you could say, uh, you know, the film doesn't really exist if you don't see it. But in here, if you're not playing it, if you're not making choices, then the story is not being told. And that concept is so different from anything else in the history of, of popular culture or media at all. My kids growing up with video games made them um, much better than I'll ever be at it. They have a, br a brain eye hand coordination that I'll never have. And I think that translates into to things like better surgeons, you know, better, better um, perhaps better scientists, people that can work with their hands and their brains better. I actually think it actually builds a better, better uh, cognitive kind of a um, skill set for, new, for younger kids nowadays. Every player's experience is going to be unique. Uh, every person who goes into a movie and sees uh, Forrest Gump saw the same movie. You know, they may have sat in different seats in the, in the theater, but they saw the same movie from the same perspective and every single frame is identical. Um, that's not the way it is with games at all. The storytellers have to accept that for the portions in which the player is in control of the game that the player is controlling the camera. So despite that we may want the player to look at this over here, the player can ignore us. The player can, you know, grief his own game. Uh, the player can make uh, a total mess of our intended story. Of course, the player is who paid $60 for the game and can do whatever he wants with it. There's a point in Dead Space 2 where you have to restore power to the station by aligning the solar arrays uh, on the outside of the station, so um, you know, part of the story is that you have this objective to do so, but actually experiencing it when, when you as Isaac go into um, this elevator, you get up into the upper part of the space station, you have to actually exit into open space, you know, you hear that it sounds like you're walking around, oh, Isaac's very gravelly voice, and um, yeah, the the, the, and plus the feeling of navigating around in three-dimensional space and floating, um, and then using your, uh, your boot jets to fly out and grab those solar arrays and be able to move them in different directions and point them where you need to to redirect the power. All that, the, the entire experience there is kind of like the player in collaboration with the storyteller is creating the story. 
I'm trying to roll back the cover now. Strauss, can you give me a hand with this? The question is, where could this go, really? Does it make sense for games to try to emulate Hollywood by telling a linear story when essentially what game players enjoy the most is the opportunity to choose and go off in different directions and not have a linear experience? One of the cool things about video games is that you know you have to achieve. You know that you're being pulled to achieve to the next level, and I think it, it instills um, competitiveness. It instills goal achievement, and uh, you know the fun. <laughs>